My name is Andrew Perkins and welcome to part 3 of my Laravel tutorial. In this video we're going to learn about Laravel's controllers, actions, and how to pass data from our controllers to our views. We'll also take a look at Laravel's routing so that we can map URLs to our controllers and actions. So we'll switch into our text editor and if we look under the application folder you can see we have a controllers folder, a views folder, and routes.php for our routing. So let's start with controllers. We're going to create a new controller. So create a new file in that controllers folder. And I'm going to save mine as authors.php because we'll be working with the authors table in our uh, database in another video. So you can name yours whatever you want or you can just follow along with me. Your controllers are a PHP class. So I'm going to create a class here. And your class name should match your file name. So we have authors.php. So our class should be authors and then you need to append an underscore controller to the class name. All of your controllers should extend the base underscore controller class. The base controller is a good place to put any common functionality that you want all of your controllers to have. So if you had a method that you wanted all of your controllers to have access to, the base controller is a good place to put that method. If you look in the controllers directory, you'll see that you have base.php, and that is that base controller. Uh, note that it does extend the controller class. This is the main Laravel controller class, and this is what gives all of your controllers their functionality. So I'm going to close that and go back here to our authors controller. So now inside of the authors controller, we can create our actions. Uh, an action is just a method inside of your class, so I'll create a public function. And there's a couple ways to create actions. The first way is to always prefix the name of your action with action underscore and then you can name it whatever you'd like. You could use main or hello. I'm just going to name my action index as that's the common name for the default action of your controller. So if you're going to create your actions this way you just always prefix your action name with action underscore. How I like to create my actions is to create restful actions. That way I can uh, define what HTTP verb my actions will respond to so they can respond to like a get or a post or a put request or a delete request. Uh, Laravel makes that really simple. You just create a public property at the top of your controller here called restful and set it equal to true. And so instead of prefixing your actions with action, you prefix it with the name of the HTTP verb that you would like it to respond to. I'm going to uh, use get in this case because the index page is just going to do a get request just to display some authors. So there's our action. We now need it to just display a view file or render a view file and we can do that by return and then you just call the view class and it has a static make method and this will render a view for you. You just pass in a string and tell it where the view's at and which view you want to render. Uh, you first tell it where it's at, that's the directory that it's under, so we're going to have ours under a directory called authors, and then you use a period, and then you tell it the name of the view file. So I'm going to call my view file index, you can name your view whatever you wanted. There we go, so there's our restful action, and it's going to render this authors index view. So we just need to create that view. So under the views folder, we'll create a new folder called authors to hold all of our authors controllers views and then in that authors folder we'll create a new file and I'm going to save it as index.php. Uh, you can also create your view files using index.blade.php extension instead and that'll use Laravel's blade templating engine and I'll go over that in another video but for now I'm just going to use the regular PHP file for creating my views. So in here you can use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. Uh, I'm just going to use HTML for now just so we can test it out and make sure that it works. So this is our author's home page. And I'll save this file. So we have our view, we have a controller, our RESTful action, and it's rendering the author's index view that we created. We now just need to set up a route so that we have a URL that maps to this controller in action so we can view it in the browser. Uh, by default, there are no routes set up for your controllers, so every time you create a controller and an action, you're going to need to define a route. To do that, in the application folder, you have routes.php. 
Laravel makes it really simple to create routes. Here is a default route that they have in here. This route is what is defining this home page that you're seeing here. So I'll go over it really quickly. We have the route class, which you can use to create your routes, and it has a bunch of static methods. Uh, they each match to an HTTP verb, such as get, post, put, and delete, depending on what you want your route to respond to. And the first parameter is a string, and that's the URL that you're wanting it to map to. And the second parameter can be an array, or it can be a closure, like it is in this case. It's just an anonymous function. And when you pass in an anonymous function to your route, this allows you to run like application logic like you would inside of your controller. So if you did it this way, you really don't even need a controller. You could do everything right here inside of your route. Now I don't like to do that. I like to have my controllers which handle my logic and then just have my routes map the URL to the controller and action that I'm using. And when you do that, you use an array. You pass in an array as the second parameter. So let's create our route here. We're going to call the route class and its get method because we're using the, uh, we're having our route respond to the get HTTP verb, which is matching the get index action that we have. I want to make sure that all matches up. And so the first parameter is the URL that you want to match to. So we want to be able to go to slash authors. Notice that you don't need to have the slash in there. You can just put authors. And then the second parameter is an array. And we just need to tell this route which controller and action it's going to use. And you do that by using key value pairs. And you just set the uses key and set that equal to first you use the name of the controller. So that's the author's controller. And then an at symbol. And then the name of the action. My action is called index. So there's our route. Here's our controller and RESTful action and our view. So we should be able to go to our browser. And if we go to slash authors, we get our page. If we look at the source, we can see there's our h1 tag from our index view file. So that's good for just rendering a static page. So we can go back into our text editor. And most of the time what happens is in your controller is you'll get some data back from your model and then you'll want to send that data to the view so you can display it to the browser. Uh, we're not going to work with a model in this video, but we are going to be able to see how you can pass data from the controller to the view. And Laravel gives you a variety of ways of passing that data. Uh, the first way is to pass in a second parameter to your make method and you can just pass in an array and you'll use key value pairs to define a variable that will be accessible in the view and then the value of what that variable is going to hold. So for instance we can make a key called name and set the value to Andrew Perkins. So now in the view we'll have access to a variable called name and it'll hold Andrew Perkins. You can also chain on the with method to the end of your make method call and this will pass another variable to the view. So it takes two parameters. The first one can be the name of the variable that you want available in the view, and the second will be the value. So in the view, we'll have access to an age variable. And we can break this down onto a new line to make it look a little cleaner so it doesn't run off the page. Uh, another way is that instead of just returning the view call, you can store it in a variable like so, and then you can use that view variable and create your own variables like little magic methods. Um, so we could create one called location and set that equal to California. So now inside of the view we'll have access to a location variable. Um, you can also use it like an array syntax. So you could put, um, let me think, what's another one that I can put into the view? How about specialty and set that equal to PHP. There we go. So now we have all of these different ways to send data to the view and we have all of these variables to be accessible in our view to output their value. So we're going to have name, age, location, and specialty. The last thing we need to make sure we do is just to return the view so that it renders that view for us. So we can go into our view file and open up PHP tags and we can echo out name and we'll put a BR tag here and then I'll duplicate a couple lines 
and this one will be location. Um, actually, let's put out the age first, then location, and then the um, specialty. There we go. And if we go to our browser and refresh the page, we can see that it outputs that data for us. So typically, though, this information is going to come from a model. So you'd make a model call and it'd give you some data and then you would create, you'd do one of these methods in order to send that data to the view. Um, so that's the basics of creating routes and working with your controllers and actions and passing the data to the views. Uh, in the next video we'll go in more depth in working with views and the blade templating engine as well as creating layouts. So I hope this one helped you and thank you for watching.